Or what is the connection between the conflict in Yemen and the situation in Gaza? Today we delve into the intertwined narratives of these two hotspots of Middle Eastern tension. In recent times, the conflict in Yemen has taken a new turn with US and British forces launching airstrikes targeting the Ansar Allah militia, also known as the Houthis. These strikes were in retaliation for attacks on ships in the Red Sea. However, history suggests that this might be a strategic misstep, as it perpetuates a pattern of misunderstanding and underestimating the Houthis. The Houthis, despite geographical and technological challenges, have established control over the Yemeni highlands and have launched attacks on Saudi Arabia and the United Arab Emirates at the same time the world is witnessing an escalation of conflict in Gaza. Tens of thousands of people across the globe have taken to the streets in protest against Israel's heavy bombardment of Gaza. These protests have been staged in cities from Baghdad to Kuala Lumpur, with demonstrators showing solidarity for the Palestinians and denouncing the Israeli aggression. Interestingly, the Houthis have been vocal supporters of the Palestinians. They claim their campaign is a response to the Israeli siege on Gaza. This solidarity has been expressed in both words and actions, with the Houthis conducting operations against the British and American warships dispatched to the Red Sea. The US Department of Defense reported that the first night of attacks involved over 150 munitions targeting more than 16 Houthi-controlled locations. This marked the first US military intervention in response to attacks on commercial ships since Israel's war on Gaza commenced. As we can see, the Yemeni conflict and the situation in Gaza are intrinsically linked with the Houthi support for the Palestinians serving as a key element in the escalating tension. To understand the depth of Yemen's support for Gaza, we need to look at the recent public demonstrations in Yemen. These were not small gatherings, but rather grand displays of solidarity, with Yemenis rallying in their millions across various cities. The protesters stood united under a common cause, reaffirming their unwavering support for Palestinians in Gaza and expressing their strong opposition to the US-British strikes on their own soil. The protests in Sana'a, the country's largest city, bore the significant title. We stand firm on our position. We are with Gaza till victory. This message was not just a slogan, but a profound declaration of intent, a promise that echoed through the streets as demonstrators carried both Palestinian and Yemeni flags, symbolizing the unity of their struggle. The air was filled with chants denouncing the United States and Israel. The crowds expressed their outrage over the US's complicity in the Israeli crimes in Gaza and its militarization of the Red Sea. They also voiced their support for Yemen's retaliatory attacks against Israeli positions, as well as against Israeli and US ships in the Red Sea, pledging to continue these attacks until the aggression on Gaza ceases. Amid the sea of protesters, Qasem Laboza, a member of Yemen's Supreme Political Council, addressed the crowd. His message was clear. The US strikes on Yemen will not deter the country from supporting the Palestinians in Gaza. He further warned the US and Britain that their military bases, interests and ships in the region have now become legitimate targets for the Yemeni forces in retaliation for their attacks on Yemen. Similar demonstrations of solidarity were seen in the provinces of Sa'ada, Al-Baida, Damar, Hudaydah, Hajar and Ta'iz further emphasizing the widespread support for Palestinians throughout Yemen. These protests reflect a deep-seated commitment among Yemenis to stand with Gaza, a commitment that appears undeterred by the recent US and British airstrikes. So, what does this mean for the future of Yemen, Gaza, and the wider Middle East? As we ponder on this, it's vital to acknowledge that the escalated conflict in Yemen, coupled with the ongoing situation in Gaza, serves as a boiling point in an already tumultuous region. Yemen's steadfast support for the Palestinians and their retaliatory attacks against Israeli and US ships in the Red Sea indicate a new dynamic in the Israel-Palestine conflict. In essence, the struggle is no longer confined to these two entities but has evolved into a broader regional issue, pulling in nations like Yemen and even sparking global protests. The solidarity shown by Yemen and the subsequent protests around the globe suggest that the Israel-Palestine conflict may continue to garner international attention, 
This could potentially put pressure on Israel and its allies, leading to shifts in their strategies or policies. However, it could also lead to an entrenchment of positions and further escalation of conflicts. The implications for US and British interests in the region are also significant, with Yemen declaring their ships, military bases and interests in the region as legitimate targets. The risk for these nations increases. This could lead to a reassessment of their involvement in the region or conversely escalate their military interventions further. Moreover, the formation of a multinational military coalition against Yemeni forces in the Red Sea by the US, a vital trade route accounting for 12% of global trade, signifies an attempt to safeguard commercial interests. However, this move could potentially escalate the conflict further, causing more instability in an already volatile region. In the face of these complex dynamics, the role of outside powers will be crucial. Their actions could either fuel the conflict or contribute to its resolution. But one thing is clear, any attempt to resolve the conflict will require a nuanced understanding of the local dynamics, the historical context, and the grievances of the different parties involved. While the future remains uncertain, what is clear is that the intertwining conflicts in Yemen and Gaza will continue to have far-reaching implications, not just for the Middle East, but for the global community as a whole.